this video, we're going to be breaking down an entire tight way off mini scheme. This is out of the Chicago Bears offensive playbook. What's really cool about the Bears offense in Madden 24 is it has bunch strong offset, which we have a full ebook on our Patreon on that. It also has this bunch wide, which we're going to do another mini scheme out of this formation. And we've already done a mini scheme at a tight open on our YouTube channel. And we've done a full ebook on the tight slots halfback week formation, which is out of the Cincinnati Bengals playbook. So there's a lot of really, really good formations in this playbook that you can mix in with this tight Y off kind of mini scheme that we're going to be going over in this video. Now the audibles for the tight Y off mini scheme here is we are going to be utilizing the play tight end corner. That's going to be one of the main plays that we use in this offense. We have the play inside zone. I would actually replace this inside zone with either the read option. If you want to do that or the RPO, I think RPOs are really effective just to have that in your arsenal. And then we have the play PA go slot cross and then red zone scissors. You can, uh, you can put anything you want here in this back slot. The mesh spot is really good because you have that nice fade out on the left hand side and the running back back wheel but in general i do think the best bang for your buck from this perspective is probably the red zone scissors play and then our base play for this formation the play we're going to come out in pretty much every single time is going to be the play flood drive it's an incredible power play and it really does make this offense tick okay so for the first setup of flood drive the main way we're going to be running this offense is with our running back to the wide side of the field. That's going to make the best kind of use of everything that we can do in this formation. So how we're going to set this up really simple is we are just going to streak the slot receiver and we're going to snap the ball really quick. You can quick snap this offense and your first read is really just this quick running back flat. And then you also have kind of a little drag route over the middle. And then you have a really tough, difficult route that they're going to have to use her over the middle as well which is what makes this so good. So if they you know, maybe play some hard flat coverage to go defend the running back route, then you can look to your tight end deep out. It's kind of an underrated route in this little progression. Don't have to do that, but you could, you could, you could put the tight end on really anything that you want. If you want to put them on, a, let's say you have conductor, you can do two quick, quick, quick hot routes. You can put the tight end on a short corner route as well, and kind of create kind of a high-low read over there. But really what makes this play, I think, super good is you can throw this post underneath these deep zones with the with the streak as a kind of a clear out route so again we're just going to streak the slot receiver and then you can smart route the right receiver as well to make it run a little sharp sharper but basically you're just going to throw this with the pass lead down into the inside and it should be able to be cover three cover four double mabel coverage every coverage they're going to have to use or this route um, provided that you have enough time in the pocket. So if you wanted to, another thing you could do is block your running back. This is an extremely versatile play, but essentially it's just a slant post concept over the middle or, or a shallow cross concept. As you see right there, nice little aggressive catch back to the ball and kind of keeps it out of the defense's hands. Now, another thing with this play is if you do have some time, you can also throw this kind of to the sideline a little bit more. So you'll see more, more like a crosser, more like a crosser route. And you see that you can get that possession catch over there on the sideline really well. Again, really good against cover four. It's even better against cover three. I'll show it against cover three real quick. So the cool part about cover three and what this can do for you is this post route is going to do a, a pretty good job of getting the outside third is just not going to break down as much as an outside quarter would. I think it's crazy how I just got screamed at in a three-man rush and dollar with no uh, pass rush points enabled. But anyways, we'll just show you again. So you see... See how that outside third is really not going to play that. And then you can just simply throw that to the sideline and get a really, really nice catch. Now, one of the more popular coverages that I did want to just briefly uh, take a look at here is a double Mabel with 30 yard clouds. This is something that, you know, kind of a standard way that people like to play. Either you're going to get a cover four base, a cover three base, or some type of cover two. And typically that cover two is going to be a double Mabel cover two. Sometimes you'll get a, a roll coverage, which we'll touch on that as well. But in general, this is kind of what a cover two would look like. So you see here, those 30 yard cloud flats. So the cool part about this post route is the deep half is not going to get to the sideline anywhere close to what a third or a quarter could get. And then this post is just going to run right over the top. And as you can see, you can hit this uh, in a nice little pocket against the defense. So this is a really, really, really good play against any kind of standard coverage that you're going to face. It's what makes, I think that's what makes a good power play, just being able to beat a variety of coverages. We're going to show now a man-to-man -man coverage. 
So if you do get main coverage, really the main route that I would want you to look at here is either your drag or your post. As you see, the post route also beats man coverage really well over the middle. And then the drag route will beat man most of the time. It just depends a little bit on how good of the press animation that they get on him. But typically this drag does win. One thing you can do is wheel the running back if you are facing man coverage. What the wheel is going to do is he'll beat man coverage. You see right there. And he'll be able to actually beat that man coverage for a big play over the top of that defense. So now they're going to have to have you know, safety help on the left, safety help on the right, and man coverage to deal with some of these big routes that you have. And then you also have your ability to just simply check it down to your drag route, which comes underneath. And we know how good the rack animations are this year. You can get really nice catching animations uh, with that. So it's also a really good route, route combo for man-to-man. -man. For the next setup of the play Flood Drive, we're going to be taking a look at a cover three beater. This can also do a really good job of attacking cover four. This is kind of the one-play touchdown formula that I really like out of this formation. So again, we have the running back to the wide side of the field. And what we're going to do on this left-hand side is we are going to put this kind of outside receiver on a hitch. We're going to drag the slot receiver, and that's really it. That's the main combo. What you can do here to the right side, again, is you can block your running back for extra protection because it is kind of going to give the play some time to develop. You can put your tight end on a block and release little cross route if you wanted to, put him on a flat, put him on a corner, put him on anything you really want. doesn't matter. You could also do something like this if you wanted to. But what's really nice about this is when you don't run any vertical routes to that left-hand side against cover three, you've got a chance for a one-play score, as you can see. Just kind of gets right over the top of the third on that left-hand side. This is really good specifically if your opponent is pressing their cover three. So if, they're, if they have backed off corners, it's sometimes a little bit of a tight window, as you probably just saw. But when they press their outside third, you'll see right here, as I accidentally flipped the play, you'll see that oftentimes this does a lot better. Now, another thing you can do that's kind of underrated is streak the tight end. With the tight end streak, it'll just clear out that middle third and kind of get him out of the way a little bit faster. Sometimes you get these random bumps in practice mode in game that's not going to be as big of a, a big as big of an issue. You will still get some bumping, so just kind of be mindful of that. If they do bump, that can cause some problems with the route combo. But in general, if he doesn't get bumped into, he's going to cross the face of that safety, and there's this little pocket right there where you can get that nice free form and be able to attack the cover through coverage. Now, everything else on the play is literally just check down reads. So, you know, you don't have to, you know, tie it in, you know, again, like I would do something maybe like this, and then you can kind of choose what you want to do here to the right side. If you want to leave this flood concept, if you want to wheel the running back and block the tight end, I think this is a really good combo because if you, in the event, you get some man coverage or maybe you guess wrong, you have uh, some combos to kind of fall back on. But another thing, the running back kind of gets more into the seam and he'll actually even affect that middle third some more than you might think. And as you see, just a really tight window, but you're able to hit this pretty effectively against the cover three. Now, another way to kind of introduce some of the same material uh, that I really like here, and I think it's an underrated aspect of the offense, would be to motion this receiver over on a streak, put the tight end on a corner, and then just drag this backside guy. So you see, this is kind of what the route combo looks like. This is really good against specifically cover three. And the reason why is because now this will really pull that middle third defender. And then, as you see, you still have this really nice window to be able to hit this right guy on the left. And then you also have a street corner flat concept to the right-hand side. One of the things that I have talked about a little bit here on the channel in the, in, the, in the past is the placement of these clear-out routes. So you see here, this clear-out route, if you put them on a, even if you put him on like a fade, for example, what's really cool about this is, let's say this is cover four, he's going to get outside the numbers quick, and that tight end corner will be open to that wide side of the field. So I, I just think that's a little underrated kind of mini thing that you could do uh, with the motions of these receivers, I, I just think it's helpful. So, it's, and you can do the same thing with this guy. So, see here, just bring him over, put him on that streak, and now you have a little bit more of a cleaner read on the back end of the play while still having, you know, a really good chance to manipulate cover three or cover four. Now, the cover four aspect of this kind of one play touchdown is a little bit difficult because of the positioning of the safety on the left-hand side. So you'll see if we kind of go with that original setup. 
You can still kind of throw this, but it's just a really tight window. If they have deep zone KO, it could be a little bit problematic for you. So one thing you can do to kind of help this against cover four would be to streak the tight end, and then basically everything else is the same. And I would probably go ahead and block the running back. And what you'll see here is now that safety is going to get a little bit more influenced by that tight end streak, and then there's this window in which you can hit the deep post over the top. So we'll show this one more time, and then we'll talk about some other concepts. So you see here again, tight end is going to clear out. The inside quarter is going to get kind of manipulated by him, and then there's this big void right here to be able to throw him open, essentially. So love this combo. This is really a really good cover three, cover four beater. The next play we're going to be going over in this little kind of mini scheme is the play tight end corner. I think this play is really relevant for kind of some of the standard things that people are going to try to do when defending this formation. A lot of people will look at this formation and they're going to apply like some of their main principles for defending something like a tight slots type of look. They're going to apply that to this formation. And so it's going to look something like this. You're going to get a lot of this double flat, double Mabel coverage. You need to be prepared in terms of how to attack this defense. So what I like to do with tight end corner, and this is really the main reason why we have this in the playbook, we're going to streak the right side receiver. Now, as you can see, the tight end is running from the short side to the wide side. This will not do a very effective job of being able to attack and manipulate cover three and cover four out of this, though we do have some kind of check down options for you, okay? So what you're going to see here is it's basically this tight end corner route is the main read that we're going to have. And then you can kind of do a couple of different things with this. One of the things I like to do is just put a backside drag and block the running back and let the play run like this. You have this little really unique kind of pivot route that's really effective, in my opinion, for attacking man coverage and kind of being a good check down read for you. So as you can see right here, the tight end is going to run, and then he's going to clear. Of course, I threw it just a little bit too early. He typically will clear the 30-yard cloud. Then right there, for whatever reason, let me show this one more time. And then we'll also show you how to manipulate that 30-yard cloud flat uh, with some other things as well. So again, let me just put the, the clouds out there. So let's see here, tight end corner. And then you can just have some time in the pocket. And there you see, kind of clears it over the top of that 30-yard cloud. And now you're able to throw him, basically throw him open from that position. Now, the cool part about this is one of the standard adjustments that people will do when they see that route combo on your field is they're going to take their user out of the middle of the field and they are going to basically go run with him. So oftentimes in a, in a defense, for example, you know, it's like something like this that would probably mean that this guy is going to go run with the tight end. So as you can see, he's going to bail and go run with the tight end. So then that's going to put this middle, uh, this hook curl in a lot of conflict because the hook curl can't defend both end breaking patterns. So what you're going to see is this drag is going to get open kind of right in that little pocket. You can kind of check down to it right in that little window right there. Another thing that you can do, and again, it kind of depends a little bit on what they're doing with their underneath coverage out of this. But another thing that you can do here is you can also hit this little backside uh, whip route, provided you have enough time. And you see that drag will clear out that purple as almost like a flat route. And then that little smash, that little return route is going to come open underneath that coverage. Now, as I said in the beginning, one of the things about this setup is one of the weaknesses of this setup is let's say that they're in a, in a more of a press alignment and they're running more cover three cover four coverages, what will happen is that outside quarter, as you'll see right here, will do a really good job of playing him. As you see, he does a really good job playing him. has to do with hash marks and field positioning. So what we're going to do to kind of counter that and what we're going to do to kind of, again, manipulate him a little bit more is let's say we see this kind of pressed up look. Then what we're going to do is the same exact route combination. The only difference is we're going to put the tight end on a corner route. We're going to fade that slot receiver and then we're going to still do the backside drag. So this is what the combo looks like now. And now it's basically the same idea. And you see that that short corner is going to get into a really soft spot against cover four and cover three coverages when ran to the wide side of the field. So it really does a good job of, you know, if they're running a lot of 30-yard clouds. One of the main giveaways to the fact that they're going to be running a lot of 30-yard clouds is going to be that the corners are backed off. Not a lot of people are going to run a coverage uh, cover a, a cover four out of an alignment like this. 
And if they do, then we can still check down underneath to our little return route. Okay, so that is the play tight end corner, at least part of it. I want to show you another kind of fun little addition to the play tight end corner that I think is kind of a, a unique, unique little deal that you can do out of this formation. So what we're going to do is we're just going to motion the tight end across the formation. And as you can see, it's going to turn this into basically kind of like a makeshift bunch. And then we are just going to essentially drag the – Slot receiver, you can smart route the tight end and streak the solo receiver. And this basically becomes smash return. Now, if you have hot rod master, I'll show you another thing you can do with this. But this kind of basically creates the same idea where we're just really doing a good job of attacking the, the underneath and attacking the middle of the field. Now, let's say you have hot rod master, which you can do, or just a simple slot apprentice out of this, out of this play. If you have hot rod master, what you can do from here is you can put the slot receiver on that slot apprentice post. And if you wanted to either, if you wanted to leave this alignment right here, then what I would recommend doing is fading this right side player, put the tight end on a little five yard baby out route, and then block the running back. This is going to attack a lot of the same parts of the field that smash return does and that fade on that right side. It's going to do a really good job of pulling that outside quarter to kind of open up a significant amount of space for you to be able to throw the ball kind of underneath of the defense, okay? So that's that's a big deal. So you have that ability or capability to do that. Another way to run that kind of same type of concept would be to motion the tight end over, put him on a drag, and then now you – I would still put the fade. I think the fade just does a really good job of clearing out uh, zones for you, especially for these backside posts and backside crossers. Now, one of the other things I did want to cover real quick is uh, tight end corner as a, a little bit more of a rollout play. So something like this setup. And then the cool part here is we're going to get out of the pocket. And the more we get out of the pocket here, you see I can kind of throw this on the sideline. It becomes a little bit more difficult for them to actually stop the play is all that we're, we're trying to show here. Again, if we put this guy on a fade on the right side, then we can leave this deep corner route. And then again, you kind of just build routes around it. So you want to do a backside drag, maybe block the running back. And then again, this is kind of a design rollout play where we're going to roll out here, right? And then maybe we check it down to the drag. Maybe we check it to the tight end. It becomes more of a sprint out option type of, type of passing concept, okay? Another one of my favorite things to do with tight end corner is really, as you can hopefully maybe see here, I really like building around this little whip route because this little whip route is really unique. So what I like to do with this, another really fun little setup that I like from this is we are going to streak the slot receiver and it's going to essentially be a clear out route. And then we're going to tight end apprentice post the tight end. And then what I like to do is curl and table the back. So you have a curl flat concept on the right, and then you have essentially a shallow type of concept. The spacing on this setup right here is really cool. So your first read is a seam streak. If that's not open, typically this tight end is going to get right in this little window right here and going to be a pretty open read for you. So then from there, you can also kind of build around this. Again, I talked a little bit about 30-yard clouds. So one of the other things you can do to 30-yard clouds, kind of manipulate them a little bit, is you could do the same exact setup. Whoops, apologize. I don't know what I just did. I accidentally audibled to single back tray or something. So you can basically do the same exact setup that I just showed you. Uh, the only difference is now we're going to put the tight end on a crosser. A tight end apprentice crosser is going to get underneath of a 30-yard cloud, and then you can just catch it literally right underneath it. So you can intermix a tight end apprentice post and a tight end apprentice crosser, and they both are going to kind of serve very similar purposes. Another thing you could do even is you could also even mix in like the slot, this guy on the slot post if you wanted to do that. Or another really cool thing you could do is if you just use this little tight, this running back route, it's going to run like a slant route. What I find with this tight end corner running back angle route is it's a little bit more, it's not like a hot route master Texas pattern. So you can use this as well to be a really good little, little route, um, which leads me to kind of another setup that I like is be something like this here. We essentially are going to use the running back like he's a slant route. This is a really good route for man coverage. And you see, he's just going to kind of get in these soft spots of the zone. 
that you can easily manipulate the coverage. So if you're ever getting a lot of man coverage, they should not be able to play that much man coverage on you with this with this play, this formation in general. And you would just want to basically run variations of what I just showed you. So let's say they're playing a lot of man coverage. We're just going to post this guy on the on the right. We're going to out route the tight end, and then we're going to streak the so or the the right side receiver. So it's essentially just a slant post kind of idea. And you see the running back angle route just cooks man coverage. So that's the play tight end corner, one of my favorites in the formation. I want to show you another easy way to manipulate uh, Mabel coverage, and that's just play red zone scissors. So what we're going to do with this play red zone scissors is kind of my variation of a double corner out of this formation. So what I like to do is we're just going to corner out the solo receiver, streak the tight end. Now let's say you can't do that. Let's say you don't have hot wrap master. All you have to do is just streak this, this guy on the right then, and you still get the same kind of idea, okay? But in general, I like to use this almost like a double corner type of idea, and then we're just going to run backside drag, and I would probably put a backside post or smart route the in route. You see? It's kind of what it looks like. The cool part about this is this running back route is going to get into that kind of short corner space, and you're able to throw that underneath 30-yard clouds pretty much all day long. So this is going to get them out of 30-yard clouds. And then I want to show you kind of some other setups that once we've kind of got them away from trying to just play, you know, cloud flat coverage and stuff like that, this is where um, I think this is where, you know, they start to break down a little bit. So the next, the other thing I wanted to show real quick is this PA go slot cross play. I haven't talked about this yet. Real quick, I'm not going to bore you by putting 30-yard clouds on the field here, but I just want you to see this. This crosser is really good. So um, in this case right here, you just would fade this, this guy on the right side. And if you're playing a double Mabel coverage, you'll see here that this crosser just gets super far down the field. It's an absolute, it's an absolute nuke type of play. Now, the other cool part about this, this play in general is some of the cool things that we can do with this little wheel route that uh, Valdez Scantling is on. So one of the things that we can do is we can run um, kind of a variation of Durham where we're going to put the running back on a streak, the tight end on a crosser or a post, and then we're going to run a little zig and streak. This right here, very simple, very good setup, and very good against double flat. So your first read pretty much is this little quick throw to the back. We're looking at the whip route, and then we're really manipulating. If the user goes to the tight end post, then we can throw kind of that, that running back wheel underneath of it. All right. Now I want to spend just the last couple of minutes here with you guys talking about my favorite variation of a red zone setup out of this formation. There's a couple things that we can do out of this. The first thing you want to do in the red zone is you th this RPO is really good. So you just want to throw this out here. Try to just, you're basically looking if you have space to throw it, throw it. If you don't have space to throw that route, then what I love about this play is this, this little run play is actually really good. It's hard to ball. It's hard to stop consistently. It's a, it's a really good run play. And then the other thing that you have here is you have this red zone scissors play. So the cool part about this red zone scissors play is we can take the tight end, put him on a tight end print his post. We can put this receiver on a we could put both receivers on the left side on a hitch and then just motion one of them across if you wanted to so you see kind of like this and then you know whatever you want to do with the backside guy you could even do something like this if you wanted to okay but in general if you take a look at the running back this corner or the post is really the main is really the main reads now i'll show you a, a different variation it's a little better for some reason the running back route kind of stops in the back of the end zone so that kind of leads me to my next point that i wanted to show out of um, tight end corner. So I like tight end corner down here in the red zone. And the reason why is because there's a lot of things I could do to manipulate coverage. So one of the things that we can do is we could float the running back over here to the left-hand side, put him on a ghost route. We're going to drag, um, or I'm sorry, post the slot, post the tight end, and then hitch the right side guy. So you see this is what the play art looks like. I think this is pretty decent. The reason why is because the post on the right side more frequently is going to get open. Now, another thing that kind of changes everything and something that is worth kind of mentioning is let's say you're on a hash mark that changes everything in the red zone because the hitches have to be on the numbers for them to be super good. Well, if you look at this play tight end corner, 
when we go to that setup I just showed you, now the running back ghost is going to actually be on, on the actual numbers. So now you could do something, you know, something like this right here. And then this ghost route, you see it's right on the numbers. So it's going to hold the zones really well. And then you can throw kind of the tight end over there. And if they go to that, then you can throw back side to your little, your little, um, your little hitch or your, um, I'm sorry, your little return route. So that's another kind of method that you can do. Um, one of the th other things that we could do here is we could motion this guy, put him on a hitch, and then we could um, basically motion the tight end out. You see he's going to go out wide like this. And then from there, you know, you can kind of just essentially have that backside return route. But then you also have the tight end in perfect position to pull, and you can throw that over there on the right side. All in all, in my opinion, this is one of the best ways to manipulate coverage down here in the red zone, and I think one of the best offenses in general. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed videos like this, you're going to love our Patreon. It's where we give access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks. You can sign up for that by heading down to the description and clicking the link down below.